the tutorial on how to create a mold and a finished product. In this case, it's the name medallion we've been talking about. This is the render menu for Fusion 360. Uh, the materials have been set and the color of this clear acrylic has actually been set too. So this is what you want to have for your final design um, idea in Criterion B. So going through this process will get you ready for um, um, creating this for your uh, advocacy project. So I've already created a new project that's blank. Just going to start with um, a circle on this plane. It's going to be 40. I don't even just type it in. Now that I've got the circle, I'm still in the sketch menu, but I can control click on that circle and press and pull, and I can make it four millimeters thick, which automatically down here at the bottom, it's taken me out of the sketch menu and it's created that body. So I've got my first circle and my first extrude or push and pull. Now we're going to go back into the sketch menu, this time for the text, and we're going to, we're going to want to click on top of the cylinder or the medallion. And I'm going to create an S. I want it to be 30. And I'm going to bold it. Before I do anything else, I want to flip it around and move it to the right place. Because if you don't move it before you finish this, it's hard to move. So oh, it's about right. I'm going to hit OK. I'm still in the sketch menu on the 2D plane. But I can control click on the S, and I get all the things I can do with the S. I want to explode the text. That creates a vector line that I can actually click on the inside, which I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm still in the sketch menu, and I'm going to extrude. This time I'm going to extrude down, so I'm going to be minus 2. And I'm making sure, looking at the dialog box, that uh, everything that I want is, is true. The operation is to cut. If this was on join, it wouldn't do anything. So I'm going to make sure it's on cut. Click OK. And there's basically the finished medallion. I do need to fill in the S with some resin. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to just create the mold that you would pour the pewter into to create this medallion right here. So. Um, I could do this by creating a rectangle and extruding it, or I can come here to the primitives and create a solid box. I'm just going to do that. So this, okay. So my F, my medallion's right on where I want to work. So if I just turn it off, I can see my planes again. I'm going to create it here. I'm going to turn my body back on because I want to be able to see. I'm going to create it over here. So I'm just going to create a box. And I'm going to start typing in here. 60. 60 by uh, 60 by 15. And that's because the material piece of wood that you're going to be given for this medallion at least is exactly that. So it has to be, when we export this STL mold, it needs to be the exact same um, dimensions. Okay, great. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this medallion and I want to flip it and put it into this mold, and then I want to subtract it so it creates the, the negative. Um, that can be done with the move. If I click M, I could actually click on this, raise it up, and flip it over, and then move it, but that's, that's a little complicated, so I'm just not going to do that. But you could do that. Moving is with, the, with uh, clicking M. You're going to get all these. You can move it in one direction. You can move it within the planes. So there's three planes. And you can rotate it along the three axis. Okay, Very powerful. But I'm going to go ahead and use um, a modify and a line. And this just looks at two faces and then puts them together. Okay, So over here, we're going to align some bodies. We're going to go from here to here. Oh, that did not work. That It did align it, but it aligned it not the, in, not the correct way. So I'm just going to cancel those. You can just push X. You don't have to back up or delete or control. You just, you can, you've got the, this, this dialog box will take you the whole way. So let's try this from again. Let's just make sure we're on top this time. Let's try this. Okay. Well, not perfect, but it's in there. Uh, I can I can flip it around and flip upside down, but I, this is pretty much where I want it. So I'm going to click OK. 
It's not centered, so I'm going to click M. I think I'm just going to click, I'm going to come over to bodies, and I've got my two bodies here. I'm going to get rid of the, the second body, just so that I know that I'm clicking on this. Now that I can click my body back on, and I can move it just a little bit more centered. Okay? This browser shows you everything you've done all the bodies you've created, and all the sketches you've made. And you can see right now we've turned off two of the sketches because we don't really need them there. Okay. I noticed my S is not centered perfectly. Um, but that's okay for right now. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, modify. And one of the techniques uh, you can do is called combined, and you can either join things together, you can subtract, intersect, or cut. Okay, so we're going to do that. And up here on the dialog box, it tells you again, target body. We want to select the, the block. That's going to be our body that we are going to um, cut into. And the tool we're going to use to cut is this medallion. Again, you can already see it's on cut right now, so that's okay. If it's on join, it would look like this. But on cut, it looks like this, because it's cutting in. There are two things down here. Do you want a new component? No, we don't. But we want to keep the tool, which is the actual medallion. So if this is not click, click this. And let's take a look at, by moving our medallion up, we can see, I'm going to move it right back down next to it. I'm going to say OK. And there, there we have the mold and the medallion. It's very simple. I'll move this down a little bit. I'll just move it down here. I think that's about right. Nope, I'm going to move it down more. And I'm going to move it next to it. Okay, okay. all right. All right. Um, we need to create a spew hole, which is where we're going to pour the pewter so we can create um, a sketch. Uh, I'm going to create a sketch right on top here. I'm going to click L for line. Once you learn uh, some of the shortcuts, it's just really easy. And we're going to make a, a kind of a an angle in so that when the pewter drops here, even if it kind of like splashes here, it'll go all the way down, fill up this entire space. Then we're going to go across. And we're, going to go, we're just going to go across here too. We stop the sketch. If you've done it correctly, you should be able to click on this, control click, extrude. We're just going to go down, I think point, no, that's too much, 0.2 millimeters. Hit OK. And it cut into it. Just make sure so I'll come down here to this and control click, edit feature. Just make sure that you got on cut because if you put join, it won't make, it'll actually not do anything. So cut. I'm just checking that. All right. Now, now that you have uh, the spew hole, we're going to modify the materials so that we can we can render them correctly. Okay. Oh no! First, we need to fill this S with resin because that's what we're going to do, and that's one of the things you need to learn to do in your project. So, we're going to use a tool called Boundary Fill, and Boundary Fill is under the Create menu, and it means you actually fill in a space that you've defined to make a new body. And with that new body, you can create, um, you can change its material. So in this case, we're going to change it to resin. So in order to create the boundary fill, we need to, we know that this body is going to be part of it, but we need to show the top is a body as well. So we're going to construct an offset plane right on top. Okay. We're not going to change the number of millimeters because we want it just on top. So now we can tell Fusion 360 that this plane is the top and this medallion is the bottom and anything in the S, fill it in as a new body. So let's create boundary fill. It wants us in the dialog to select the tools. Those are the things that you want to create the boundary with. So we want to create a boundary with the top and the bottom. And right when it figures out, oh, I found a boundary, it, everything else turns green, and it gives you these two cells. 
So we're going to click on the cells because we're going to select the cells. You have to be very careful which one. You can see one of them highlights the S, the other one highlights the entire thing. You only want to click on the cell, the cell that is going to fill in the boundary of the S. And we want to create a new body, of course. And I can come over here and turn off that construction plane. You can see the S is now its own body. Okay. At this time, it'd be a good time to name your browser and your bodies. So I would call this is my resin. This is my mold. This is the mold letter. I really should click and highlight this whole thing. Um, and combine these, 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 this mold, but I'm not going to do that right now. And then this is the medallion. Okay. So now we can go to the modify and we can change the physical material. Here's steel, let's see. Well, if the, um, the, the mold is going to be wood. So let's find, uh, here's a pine, this is kind of nice. See, because the S is a separate body over here, I have to, I have to tell it what to create, but what to change the material of that S2 as well. Um, let's see, let's come back up here. Metal, we can say, I think, we don't have pewter on here, but we do have lead, which is kind of similar. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to create that. That's got lead. And then, I don't know if we have resin on here, but we do have plastics. And let's see, if I click on plastics, and I scroll down here, mine's going to be kind of a clear but you might want a opaque, so decide what you want and try to get over here to the S, make sure. And you can see it's clear now. But that's not everything. That's just the physical material. We want to change the clear material, uh, this resin to a specific color so we can change the appearance of those materials. And here are the materials I've used so far. Here's the acrylic, there's a lead, and there's the pine. So I want to change this. So I'm going to control click it to bring up the uh, menu and you edit. And here you have the color palette. So you can see it's becoming yellow. Let's make it orange. Okay, I'm so done. All right. Now the only thing you need to do after this <coughs> is go to the render. <coughs> <coughs> and it should show you kind of what it would look like. This is not a high quality render, this is a low quality render. You have to make sure you save it. I'm just going to call render Sean Man. And then I'm going to click the render button. You can change the lighting, you can change the setup, uh, you can add all kinds of um, notation and stuff to it, which you will need to do for your final product. But that can be done in another, in another program. You can screenshot this. Click the render. It'll load and just say render. It does this in the cloud. So if I click this, you can see it's starting to render this. It will take about 10, 20 minutes. But the version, oh, look, it's rendering a bunch of different versions um, from different angles. But this will come out looking a lot more high quality. And this is what you should have for your, well, actually for your final design. You should have the mold like this, and you should have your final design rendered um, uh, to show and then um, and then you'll have this mold will be create an STL that will actually go into the CNC machine to create your mold for your pewter casting okay thank you if there are any questions let me know